Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new episode of Knowing Wheel, episode 61? I think every week I seem to intro these forgetting what podcast number we're on. I really should just double check before we jump into them. But as always, I'm joined by Jamie183. How how we doing, mate? I'm good. My uh, my background is slightly less interesting than usual because, yeah, I'm moving house imminently. So I look like I'm in a prison cell, but there we go. I promise I'm not. About halfway through the show, Jamie's actually going to move. We're going <laughs> to yeah. go with him to his new house. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think what we're gonna. Well, I think we did try to work this out pre-show, didn't we? I've only ever been in two locations for this podcast: yeah. at home and then at a different home. Jamie's yes. been in about fourteen. I've. This is a well. The next podcast next week on Monday when we record it, I'll. I think that's my sixth or seventh location. So there we go. <laughs> It's, yeah, I mean, it is a very, very boring way to start the show this week. Um, yeah. But yeah, of course, we mentioned a couple of weeks ago, we were going to try and change around the format slightly uh, with the way we do the podcast. So apologies if you were expecting a show on Tuesday. To be honest, I think most of you were distracted by the fact that I've been having pretty much sleepless nights trying to get F122 content out there. But yeah, we thought we'd kind of skip Monday because it was going to be a fairly... There wasn't really a lot of news to talk about uh, between last week and then. And, we sort and of someone thought, was busy well, playing F1. Well. And someone was busy playing <laughs> F1 and forgot he had a podcast. Um, <laughs> but we also then thought we might as well do a sort of Silverstone pre-show... Then, like we said, Monday, hopefully, or should go live Tuesday, we're going to do a Silverstone review. And then we're going to try and do another pre-show ready for uh, Thursday next week, ready for the Austrian Grand Prix as well, of course, because that is a sprint weekend. So, yeah, we kind of had a few different ideas for the way we wanted to do these things. We'll see how it goes over the summer. And then, of course, we've got the summer break coming up fairly soon. So we'll sort of look back then and decide how we're going to go on in the future. Because, of course, yeah, back-to-back races can make things a little bit complicated as well. But of course, as always, there will be links down below to everything as well. You know, Manscaped, um, I, I forgot everything else everything. to do, buy bit. <laughs> uh, I forgot everything this week. Store, uh, F1 merch store, yep. Spotify, channels, that's the big Twitter. one. Uh, Clips channel, Twitters, <laughs> everything like that. It's all linked down there. It's a good job, James, my PA. Um, yeah, my brain's all over the show. This week, and of course, timestamps will be linked down below as well. You know, if you'd want to go check out certain points of the podcast, there isn't a huge amount to discuss this week, but we have got a few different and interesting stories, haven't we, Jamie? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And we'll start, I think, with um, yeah, quite old news now. But um, Pierre Gasly re-signed with Alpha Tauri, which was kind of confirmed in the Canadian Grand Prix weekend, but officially came out a couple of days later. Um, yeah, he signed for twenty twenty three which kind of uh, puts out any hope that there might have been a driver shake-up this, this silly season. Um, I don't know about you, but I think a lot of people are kind of waiting for Gasly to see what he did in terms of next yes. year, 2023, and he's staying and put, which I think makes sense, but it's just a bit... It's not very exciting. <laughs> I mean, it's ruined all the clickbait thumbnails we could have done, hasn't it? Yeah, let's exactly. Be Let, let's not beat around the bush here, Jamie. That's <laughs> the really disappointing thing. Yeah, we're going to have to be to Mick Schumacher in a Mercedes suit now. Oh, I don't want to Photoshop <laughs> that, I don't think. <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, like you said, it has kind of taken the sting out of any F1 silly season because, I mean, we run down the order. Ferrari is confirmed. Red Bull is confirmed. Mercedes is confirmed. McLaren is effectively now confirmed, especially with Zach Brown. It wasn't a story we had mentioned mm. this week, but he's basically <clears> said they're happy with Ricardo for some reason. Um, Aston Martin is confirmed. Alpha Tauri is effectively confirmed because they've come out and said Sonoda's done really well yeah. so far this year. Um, Williams, we're basically praying Oscar Piastri gets oh, the gig. Alpine confirmed. is confirmed. Yeah. That's basically confirmed. Alpine are keeping their lineup again. Um, it basically just leaves Alpha Romeo and Haas. <laughs> and yeah, it's so dead. Alpha and Alpha, you assume at least. I think. I'm obviously biased. It's but highly I think likely. Joe has been good enough to warrant a second season. Yeah, either and, Joe will yeah. get egged out and they'll put poor chair in the car. But either way, it's between two drivers. And I think it's a similar story down at Haas, isn't it? Either Mick Schumacher is going to get egged out or someone we're going to see no there, chase there either. Yeah, but I don't really know who, unless it was like a drug unless addict, for example. Um, if Drugovich, he still yeah. wants some money. Yeah. I have to wait and see about that one. So I guess I can Photoshop Drogovic onto the Haas suit and that'll yeah, have to do for a thumbnail. Yeah, get those Brazilian views. 
Oh, I love the Brazilian <laughs> views. I mean, speaking of Brazil, does does that immediately lead us into oh, our second story of the week? That is uh, a segue it, and a half. It does, but I've got I'm gonna unsegue it in a second. So go on with your story. No, unsegue it first. <laughs> go on. Well, because... unsegue so we can re-segue. A sw- segue. So, yeah, I want to introduce and let us know what you think. Obviously, me and Matt both know Wheel. Um, I wanted to introduce a little bit of. Uh, yeah, like trivia to the show, so I'm sure you can play along watching. But Matt doesn't know what, what I've got planned. But I've got no idea. <laughs> I didn't know, even know Jamie was going to do this. I was linking it to that piece of news we've just gone over of Gasly staying with Alpha Tauri. Um, of course, he made his debut with, with them when they were Toro Rosso. Uh, Toro Rosso, in their whole time of history as Toro Rosso, had 15 Formula 1 drivers. And I'm going to give Matt a minute to try and name all 15 of them. Can I have 90 seconds? I mean, okay, I'm already making you, you excuses can, before we even do this. You can have 90 so seconds. I've got to, I, I don't have I've got to try and name. Be a good idea. You please get a list up before we <laughs> get a list on a Word document so you can remove them as I go. Otherwise, I'm going to be very, very upset. Idea. Plus, it's giving me time to think of them. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. You're going to have a minute since I'm messing this up. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I only have a minute. Because I think I can get all of them. Or at least I'll be incredibly close to getting all of them. I reckon. Uh, I'll just Cause... count. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Me, Are you ready me, to go? Give me a countdown then. Yeah, I'm okay. ready to go. I'm gonna yeah keep it on my uh, phone. I'll hold my phone up to the screen with the timer. Hopefully, I don't get any phone calls during this. But okay. <laughs> uh, all right. Three, two, one, go. Sonoda, Gasly, Brendan Hartley, Danny Kvyat, Daniel Ricciardo, Sebastian Vettel. Um, Jaime Algasquari. I really should have done this in a better order. Yeah. Scott Speed. Um, you also had um, Sebastian Bourdais. Um, that's nine. That's nine already. I'm pretty happy with that. I've rattled off nine pretty quickly. Um, trying to think of other Red Bull drivers. Christian Kleon. No, I don't think he ever raced for them, did he? He's he just never a did. Red Bull. Um, Le- v- Antonio Luizzi. He's another yep. one. That's, that's um, ten. That's ten. Trying to think anyone else. Um, I did, John Eric Verne. Sebastian yep. Boemi. No, it was just yep. Verne. Yeah, Verne did get a gig, sorry. Uh, Sebastian Boemi. That's 12. I've got three more to go. How much time have I got left? You've got ten seconds. Um, oh, come on. I can think of one more. You're missing. No, I can't. You're going to kick yourself. <laughs> oh, I'm missing such an obvious one, aren't I? You're no. missing three obvious um, ones. The only ones you need. All right, that's I'm it. Like... You're out. Oh, okay. Who uh, did I forget? What if we said the name Max Verstappen to you? <laughs> and science. <laughs> oh, no. And, and science. Uh, yep, and, and science. And Alex Albon. Oh, that is just so Three drivers annoying. who are on the grid, but you got Luizzi and Speed, so it's okay. <laughs> I got Luizzi, Speed, Sebastian Bourdais, but not Verstappen, <laughs> Science and Albon. I knew as soon as I started going in a random order, yeah, I was just going to forget gonna that weird sort of middle group. <laughs> oh, there dear you go. Me. Hope you enjoyed that. Matt failed. <laughs> Just me embarrassing myself. <laughs> next week he's going to prepare something oh, for me, hopefully. Good. But oh, yeah, I'm, there we yeah, go. I'm going to have to try and think of something for next week then. <laughs> but the thing is, Jamie knows wheel in like a weird anal kind of way, so I'm going to have to come up with some really obscure, <laughs> some ridiculous for next week. Yeah. Okay, let's Which move on. Drivers. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> let us know how you did. I the can't believe I forgot lot. that. Yeah, let us know how you got on. I cannot believe I forgot those three. <laughs> And also, you said Sonoda. He never raced for Toro Rosso, but there you go. Oh, and I said, oh no, Gasly did, didn't he? Gasly did, oh, we, yeah. we only talked. Yeah, I suppose. To oh, I don't fair, think you got. Did you get Kvyat? Yeah, I did get Kvyat. Okay, yeah, there you go. Because I just said so Ricardo and Kvyat in yeah. one. Yeah. Oh, that is incredibly frustrating <laughs> now. But to be fair, I'll take it. I mean, neither Sainz or Verstappen stayed there very long, and to be fair, actually, Albon didn't stay there for even less time. Yeah. Um, so true. we move. We move. Let's <laughs> re-segue back then, Jamie. Actually, we can do a different segue. Speaking of drivers that could have been at Alpha Tauri next year, Yuri Vips yes. has been binned off. And I suppose we can probably wrap these two stories up together, shouldn't we? Um, mm. Yuri Vips and Nelson PK have both been in the news for the wrong reasons over the last two weeks for both being utter clowns and yeah. some of the biggest morons in the world over the last week. Yeah, and it's it's very weird. I mean, yeah, they're both there. I mean, I'm sure you've seen. If not, then both of them on separate occasions have used a very strong derogatory 
term. Um, yeah. What Eurovitz was just on a stream. Uh, Nelson PK said it about Lewis Hamilton, which is obviously, yeah, terrible. Not um, good. Either no. way, not good. When yeah, you sort both. of think, yeah, Eurovitz is young enough that it should he should have always been brought up with it being an issue, especially if you're trying to get to Formula One. Mm. And by no way means am I trying to say because PK is older he can get away with it, um, but. Still, he was from a generation where, of course, it wasn't so socially accepted to be of mixed race or of a different mm. colour. Um, but obviously, again, we, we won't repeat the words that were used because, as Nelson PK probably should have understood, and Yuri Vips for that matter, we're white and it's not a word we should mm. use. Not at all. So, yeah, initially Red Bull uh, suspended Vips and now he's been sacked effectively from the whole Red Bull Academy, which... I think is probably, yeah, well, it's definitely fair enough. Oh, it had like, to be done. It yeah, had to they, be done. Yeah, they weren't going to get away with doing anything else, really, and it's fully deserved. So, yeah, I, we haven't heard news if that means his F2 seat is also in jeopardy. Um, but, yeah, it may I mean, come he's down at high-tech, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's at high-tech. But he is basically backed by Red Bull, which pay for the seat. Yes, yeah. Um, or he was, anyway, before... I th- yeah, I think high tech are probably going to see him through this weekend and bin him off ready for Austria. I'd imagine. Yeah, potentially. Although, if there's drivers asking about it, like it's not the best look if you've been dropped from a program to then carry on racing. For high tech, it's not a good look, I don't think. But I think maybe, yeah. maybe a bit late to replace him here. Yeah, I think the only thing I can think of for high tech is, of course, you know, they at least want to field two cars this weekend. Mm. And I'm sort of thinking, you know, Austria next weekend, Red Bull's home track. Maybe they can try and push someone up into the seat ready for there. And it yeah. kind of be, a, you know, try and... I mean, this whole situation is obviously incredibly negative, but try and sort of give at least like an F3 star some positives ready for next weekend. Yeah, but, definitely. I mean, yeah, it's just such a shame, isn't it? You know, a Formula One have obviously come out with a statement after both incidents. It kind of, again, to be honest, has felt like a bit of an empty statement from Formula One. Yeah, you know, Hamilton, bit. Mercedes, Ferrari, Aston Martin, they've all come out with their own separate statements, which felt a little bit more heartfelt. But I think the problem is when the FOM do this sorts of thing is it's kind of very much a, look, we race as one. And then yeah. still these actions are still going on and not being stamped out the way they should be. And they'll basically go unpunished by the FIA. Like, obviously, Vips has had to pay for what Vips said, has but... been sacked, yeah, yeah, which is completely fair. But, that was but obviously, PK... Thing. Yeah. You can't really do much when they don't really... Like, they're just a character now. They have no affiliation with anyone. No. So, no, exactly. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, I think, um, obviously, the Nelson PK one is obviously an even more of a horrible situation in, obviously, separate context because not only was he just referring to Lewis Hamilton uh, in the sense... I think it was on a Brazilian uh, news show, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah. I think it was CNN Brazil or something, from what I gathered. Um but, of course, you know, he's got ties with Max Verstappen, of course, everything that happened between Hamilton and Verstappen last year. You know, Jos mm. Verstappen made some very negative comments in Hamilton's <clears throat> direction last year as well. It's just, I mean, it just makes your skin crawl, doesn't it, when you think about yeah, it? it's horrible. It's a very, very horrible environment to be around. And, again, you know, Jamie and I both completely stand up against racism. Um, and, yeah, just not, not what we want to talk about on the podcast, but it was relevant news that needs to be discussed. Mm. Unfortunately, it's it's a sad reality that we still live in a world where these things have to be discussed because people keep doing them. Um, but yeah, goodbye, Yuri Vips, and I hope we never hear anything about Nelson Piquet again. Mm, Brazil's worst Formula One world champion, anyway. Yeah. There we go. Shall we move on to, to more cheery news? Let's bring on some positives, Jamie, after that little yeah. rant. <clears throat> and as positives, if you're a Mercedes fan, um, because Which I am. they have they have a uh, fairly decent upgrade for this race, from what I've heard. Um, yeah, I mean, Toto Wolff said that they aimed to win it, but obviously that's just out of context because they aim to win every race. I don't think he actually thinks they will win it. Um, but you never know. Hamilton's well, obviously won. He's won what eight times at Silverstone. So yes, yeah, yeah. It it could be. It's a yeah. Mercedes upgrades. I think they had a, a pretty decent one in Spain and the car pace was a bit closer to the top two teams. And then, It was pretty competitive in Spain, mm, wasn't it? Yeah, and then it kind of hasn't really seen it through. But obviously Silverstone's a very smooth track, very high-speed corners, so it should suit the Mercedes quite well in terms of the issues they've been having won't be as obvious, I don't think. 
So yeah, we could see some British drivers on the podium if you're lucky at the British Grand Prix, which would be nice. Um, I mean, if there's ever a race you wanted to turn around. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Probably the best opportunity for that. Um, a more positive news, although kind of like a backhanded negative, because but say the um, the wind tunnel testing time, which I'm sure we went over a bit in preseason, um, but the the time you're allowed in the wind tunnel is determined by championship constructors' position now. Um, yeah, basically they they determine it by previous seasons up until six months into the new season. <clears throat> so that time is going to reset on the 30th of June, which is the day this podcast is going out. So it means that Mercedes obviously the previous one they won the constructors so they had the least time now they've got the third least time which basically means they've got more time in, in the wind tunnel compared to red bull and ferrari um so yeah in the rest of the season until december 31st i'd guess uh they're going to be getting a bit more wind tunnel time which can only help them as well so maybe we'll see a six car fight for the win although i don't think the wind tunnel time will affect silverstone that much <laughs> No, no, that being said, but even if we get sort of later on in the year, isn't it? I think this is kind of what we've discussed before. I think Mercedes are hoping by the end of the year they're going to be right there again. You know, yeah. I I still, there's a big part of me that wants to believe Hamilton's at least win one race a year streak isn't going to come to an end just mm. yet. Yeah. And to be fair, um, I, would, I would absolutely love it if 2023 gave us Verstappen versus Hamilton part two. As awful with as a bit of be. Charles Leclerc mixed in. Yeah. There. Yeah, it would be amazing. But we'll have to yeah, I think, about that. Yeah, because, I mean, Mercedes, of course, sort of mentioned a couple of times now, haven't they, about talking about longer term with Hamilton again. I'm still a believer at the moment 2023 will be his last year yeah, in the so sport. Well. But I think, yeah, if we got a Hamilton Verstappen title <clears> showdown <throat> round two, then things could get very, very interesting. Obviously, depending on how that goes, you know, I think... Let's say let's say by the end of this year, Mercedes has got a car that can fight for wins again. Hamilton and Verstappen have a brilliant battle next year. Hopefully there's no human error world champion. Sorry, I had to get that in there. Um, and let's say... Let's go down both hypothetical routes then. Hamilton wins it. I think then, you know, he's done everything he can. He's got one more world title after that. That'll be it. He's done. I think if Hamilton then just missed out, we might see him stick around for one more year depending on how mm. he missed out on it. But, yeah, yeah I, 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 it, there's a lot of hypotheticals there, isn't there, at the moment? Yeah, yeah. But it's nice to, like, even I've kind of missed having Mercedes at the front, as funny as it is seeing them struggle. like It's been interesting, yeah. hasn't it, this year? Yeah. It's been very, very interesting. I mean, to I be honest, if... It, for me, at least, it, it kind of is a shame because Ferrari is so incompetent that Red Bull have kind yes. of run away with it, whereas Mercedes are actually a serious team, just with a bad car. So it's a bit exactly. more of a fight. I, I mean, to be honest, if Mercedes do pick up the pace, they could still easily oust Ferrari for P2 and the Constructors, because yeah, they're not easily. far away still, are they, at the moment? Mm, um, let me have a look quick. I can't remember exactly how tragic Ferrari difference. have been since the first three rounds. Yeah, so, yeah, Mercedes are only 40 points behind Ferrari. And That's for one context, race weekend. Ferrari are 76 behind Red Bull. That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> So let's not say Mercedes P2 is definitely over just yet. So we'll have to wait and see about that in the second half of the year there. But I still think, you know, with the extra wind tunnel time, uh, Mercedes' focus is probably going to be on trying to get next year's car ready, yeah. aren't they? Like, they're not going to win the drivers um, this year, so they might have No, no, exactly. Speaking of upgrades, though, Jamie, another team with a lot of British backing, Williams reckon they've got some upgrades that are around the right track could be worth a second a lap in qualifying which if that's true would be mind-blowing <laughs> yeah i mean i don't we don't have really have a source for this other than lawrence barretto tweeted one thing with no with no article or anything this morning um but they've definitely got upgrades uh and yeah i mean i guess it's people in the team think it's worth a second around certain tracks you will have to i, I doubt it <laughs> personally um because yeah, yeah that would be like that would be an insane upgrade package and with how close even though Williams are at the back with how close the midfield is that would jump them basically to the top of the midfield if they could find a second on a quality lap but it's um, only over qualifying and yeah, normally yeah. they've been quite far away on one lap pace yeah and then okay in the race to be fair so if they can even catch up the likes of Aston and McLaren that'd be pretty pretty decent for them if they can yeah 
I mean, they're, they're what? I think they're last in the championship, aren't they? In yes, yeah. So, yeah, yeah you Michael never know. Martin now is, Aston Martin have been on a tear. Yeah, they have, actually. So, maybe Alex Albon pole position. You heard it here first. It might rain on Saturday as well, so you never know. If that's going to be your prediction, I'm locking that in as your I'm prediction. I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> Cancel that one. Now, that, you've said it now, you've said it now. <laughs> Jamie's put Alex Albon for pole <laughs> at the British Grand Prix. Yeah, I mean, like we said, though, you know, Williams this year have struggled on one lap pace. It's been a bit odd, hasn't it? Because, again, race pace, they've more often than not been there or thereabouts. There certainly hasn't been, you know, like a 2013 Lotus where they got no qualifying pace and then loads of race pace or something like that. Oh, no, you mean Lotus. Catering? Yeah, I thought I you were like, didn't mean... yeah. Well, yeah. No, I, I don't know either. where you thought I was going there, Jamie, but it definitely I thought was you were saying it's not like It's going. not like catering when they were awful. Because Williams are good no. in the races. No, exactly. Um, but, yeah, I mean, even if it's half a second in qualifying trim, it gives them a fighting chance, doesn't it? You know, whether yeah. just the sim date is optimistic, but they're going to be close. I mean, it'll make it fun again, you know. At the moment, we've kind of slipped into a routine, haven't we, of it's always Latifi going out in Q1, and then more often than not, Albon, at least one Aston Martin, and then probably an Alpha Tauri, isn't it? Mm, going out most yeah. weeks there with, with one surprise somewhere else. Um, but, you know, if Williams are right there or thereabouts, I mean, it'd still be Latifi qualifying last, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, if there's a lot more unpredictability ahead of him, then at least, I mean, it makes it more interesting. And I know I've said it so much this year already. 2022, the midfield battle has been straight fire. It has, yeah. From fourth down, basically, they could all be topping the midfield at certain occasions. Maybe other than Williams and Aston, but certainly the rest, the other five I mean, even teams, then, Vettel, sick the Baku. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it has been absolutely mad. Uh, mad to watch. Yes. And it's, in, it's going to be very interesting in the second half of the season to, to see who comes out on top in that fourth place fight because like Alfa Romeo, Alpine and McLaren are all really closely matched on points. Um, yes. And arguably, yeah. McLaren have the slowest car in a minute out of those three teams, and they're but Lando they're is just yeah. better than the rest of them. Uh, yeah, I'll go with that. <laughs> um. Yeah. Anyway, then shall we move, Jamie, into the British Grand Prix? Last year was a pretty pretty un unremarkable Uneventful. race, wasn't it? If I remember correctly, <laughs> yeah. Um, of there. course, we had a sprint uh, race last year. Yeah, Jamie was there, weren't you? Tell me about trackside. What, what did you see? I saw Guan Yu Zhou win a feature race in F2. I knew you were going to bring uh, that up. You also <laughs> saw him stall in the sprint, though, didn't you? Which you knew I was going to bring up. Yeah, I did know you were going to bring that up. Uh, no, it was a very, very good experience. It was also before COVID lockdown had ended in the UK. Uh, but when you're at Silverstone, it, had, it was effectively a test event. So they basically were no restrictions, which was amazing. Um, yeah, it was a great time until halfway around lap one of the sprint of the um, proper race. Uh, yeah, obviously Lewis Hamilton, Max Verstappen, probably the most dramatic moment of the year happened there. Uh, maybe other um, than the final lap in Abu Dhabi, I don't know. Yeah, what. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the most, no, I was going to say most controversial, it probably isn't even that either. Um, no, that's definitely Abu Dhabi. <laughs> yeah, it was a very good race and I'm sure... Uh, whoever's going is going to enjoy it this year as well. Unfortunately, I am not, but there we go. I am, though. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yes, I'm going to be at Silverstone this weekend. So, you know, if you're watching the podcast and you're going to be down there, I've been mentioning it in other videos. If you see this mug, please don't feel afraid to say hello. You know, I, I do want to speak to you guys, everything like that. Um, so, yeah, let's wave hello to me. Um, shout my name. Throw something at me if it comes to it. Try and get my attention. Go for it. Um, that's that's my permission now. If I come back next week and I've been bottled at the British yeah. Grand Prix, we'll all know <laughs> why. It's my own stupid fault. <laughs> yeah, please don't deck me if you see me at Silverstone. That's off the table still. I've got. I'll I want to a... give a suggestion to people because I've just remembered okay. something else that happened last year. Right. Uh, I did. It's actually my final video on my channel. Not maybe not ever. Probably ever. I actually. thought you were going to say the podcast. Then I was like, no. "Jamie <laughs> and in his retirement." <laughs> no. The, uh, yeah. No more podcasts. <laughs> no. Uh, I got to do a lap around the track on Thursday yes. um, in an yeah. Alpine A110. Um, nope. <laughs> not an, I don't know. Oh, no, it is, no, it is the new A110, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Me. I think it was. Um, but yeah, I got is. that by winning a fan zone quiz because we were right at the front of the gates on Thursday and got into the fan zone basically before anyone else. So his, get uh, there early on Thursday Go right to the fan zone stage and they'll have a quiz immediately. Try and win it and you'll get to go around in a, in a supercar. It's, it's pretty sick. 
I wouldn't quite call an Alpine A110 a supercar. No, but the rest of them were, but I didn't go in any The of them. rest of them were, <laughs> but you went in an Alpine for some reason. There was like a 720S, there was a Mercedes something, there was a Ferrari, uh, I can't remember what Ferrari it was, there was an Aston Martin, yeah, and I got to go you in an Alpine. Tell- you, you can tell Jamie is a Formula One fan, not a car fan, can yeah, you? Yeah, I know. I know. There was teams. a Ferrari. <laughs> it was red. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, but yeah, there we go. That's Jamie's top tip ready for the British Grand Prix. I've never actually been to Silverstone though, so I'm very much oh, sorry. I've never been to the British Grand Prix at Silverstone. I mm. I've been to the track before uh, for a couple of other races. For me. Um, I've been obviously to a few different venues before, but yeah, never been to Silverstone, so very much looking forward to it uh, this weekend. I've got paddock passes as well. I am so hyped. I'm so jealous of for that, this weekend. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to it, and honestly, I can't hide it at the moment. So again, you know, big ups to Bybit, a channel sponsor for hooking me up with that one. But yeah, fingers crossed there for you know Bybit Red Bull's big sponsor that we don't see Max Verstappen have the same fate he did last year. <laughs> Um, because that's probably going to be Especially a very Especially as you'll be cheering and you'll be, be sacked in. from Bybit. I won't. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've definitely got to be careful, though. If you know, if this is the weekend where Mercedes come back strong, I'm mm. definitely going to have to be careful there. As someone's going to clip this and tweet a Christian Horner. Yeah, and um, Matt sacked. <laughs> <laughs> please, please don't. Um, but yeah, really, really looking forward to it. Like I said, first British Grand Prix. If you see me... Do do please say hello. You know, second race of the year for me. I've never been to two Grand Prix in a year before. Wow. Um, I'm hoping it's drier than Imola, because that was quite a yeah. cold and dark <laughs> definitely, weekend. Definitely to be got better facilities in Imola, so you should be okay. Yes. Yeah. And of course, I'm hoping. It, well, Hamilton made me has a better weekend than he did at Imola. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I true. really did go and see him at his absolute lowest of lows so far this year. <laughs> um. <laughs> But yeah, Silverstone though, going to be interesting. No sprint race this year, of course, like we mentioned, that's going to be the weekend after at the Austrian Grand Prix. Do we jump into predictions then, Jamie? I reckon so. Yeah. I th- Is it we your didn't turn update... to go first again? Uh, you can keep going first until you overtake me. We didn't update the scores. Okay. Oh, maybe we did. I thought y- I told you to update the scores. Oh, I-, I can't because it's your message in Discord. So yeah, I know uh, you're closer than me one. I closed in and you won. How many did we each score last week? I think um, I got four and you got... F- or I got three and you got five or something like that. Oh, no, I got three and you got If I closed four. in on you by yeah, one, yeah, that definitely works. didn't happen. But either way, Let's the gap is 12 points four, in my favour. Yes. Um, is it? Hey? Oh, God, I forgot. How do I cancel? It was 22.35. Oh, I put you at, like, 32. Wow, so I'm taking points away. I'm on 26. You're on 38. 38. There we go. You got 38 and a hashtag. I don't know why. All right, great. I'll um, take that. So, yeah, twin, uh, sorry, 12 points the gap as we head in towards this weekend. Jamie has predicted Alex Albon on the poll. <laughs> don't forget he said that a minute ago. I actually don't know. I, it's really hard to call. Do I buy into the, uh, the Mercedes hype or not? I am going to say, Jamie, Verstappen poll, Verstappen race victory, I, oh my God, I'm, I really wanted to be a moron then and say Hamilton, Russell, second and third. But I can't <laughs> do it tempted. to myself. <laughs> I'm tempted. Um, to yeah, but the thing is, if you say it, it'll happen. So please do. <laughs> um, Verstappen pole, Verstappen win. Let's go Leclerc P2 and Hamilton P3. Nice. That's, I that's the am going to go Leclerc pole. Okay. I'll go... Oh, I'll go Leclerc win. Okay, never, Ferrari never back before. on top. I'll go Verstappen P2 okay. and Hamilton P3. So really, really what's going to separate us this week is who comes 1-2 and who gets pole. I really wanted to put in Fernando Alonso P3, but no. Oh, you'd be mad and stupid. Yeah, watch it happen now. I'm fuming. <laughs> if Alonso gets P3 this weekend, I will... Eat a shoe on next week's show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, watch that. Someone clip that. Someone someone make sure you clip that down below. <laughs> Anything else to add though, Jamie? Like we said, you know, a preview show was always going to be sort of a quicker skim through all the news of the week. Have we got anything more? Uh, I'm just going to check if anything's broken on Twitter. F2 and F3 back once again, which should be good yep. fun. 
looking forward to that. Uh, w Series as well, back at Silverstone. So plenty nice. of racing action, of course, over the weekend. Um, any news broken on Twitter? No, nothing's come no. up. No, okay. We, we should be good this week then. Well, there we go. Thank you all so much for watching this week's episode of the podcast. I just quickly want to say as well a massive thank you to all of you guys for 60,000 subscribers. You know, been absolutely smashing it over the last few weeks. 100k the goal by the end of the year. So you could help me get one step closer. It would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Like I said, if you're at Silverstone, please don't be afraid to say hello to me as well. Um, and yeah, we will return then with a bit of luck on Tuesday. Ready to review the British Grand Prix. Hopefully I'll have a couple of fun stories for you guys as well. And yeah, thank you very much, Jamie, as always, for joining me. And no we'll worries. be back. i got to try and think of a general knowledge trivia question for you. While you're at Silverstone. Which be while I'm at Silverstone. <laughs> but yeah, we shall return then. Hopefully <clears throat> Tuesday. Ready to look back over the British Grand Prix weekend. <laughs>